this was a highly requested video. So allow me to explain how I built a strong bench press and hopefully this will help you out. First of all, much of what you have witnessed is simply muscle memory doing its work. What you must understand is that I went through a time period where I was not benching and I lost a lot of weight. This was the legendary cut. I went from 186 pounds, full on bear mode to 160. And during that time frame, I was only doing calisthenics and gymnastics. Didn't do any benching whatsoever. Now, when you're in a calorie deficit for three and a half months and you're not practicing the lift, guess what? You're gonna get weaker at it. So naturally, when I started benching again, I was weaker. I had crappier leverages and I hadn't done the lift in a long time. So I had to rebuild myself and it's taken me damn near half a year. So this wasn't a fast process by any means but it was still very doable because I was regaining what I had built last year. I'm pretty much at a very, very similar level of strength to when I was bear mode. Now that said, before I explain what I use to rebuild that strength, I have to explain how I got there in the first place. And this means I need to explain what I did last year. So last year you saw me do a lot of exercise with bands, chains, a lot of tricep stuff. That's how I built the majority of my strength, okay? The main movements that I found benefited me tremendously was the bench press with double mini bands, double monster mini bands, double light bands, bench press with 40 pound of chain, 80 pound of chain, floor press with 80 pound of chain, bench press with mini bands and 80 pound of chain, monster plus 80 pound of chain, and light with 80 pound of chain, and then doing slingshot, touch and go, slingshot, pause. You see what I'm saying? Like these are the main movements that I did in a lot of like high volume dumbbell presses. I was doing 10 by 10 dumbbell presses. Like just stupid high volume sets, five sets of 20, you know what I mean? And a lot of triceps too. 300 reps every single workout. Go watch some of my older videos. You'll see what I'm talking about. A lot of it was intensity days that I filmed for you, but trust me, those volume workouts were even more crazy. So the way that I got the strength was by using the special exercises. I never did raw benching last year. I just didn't do it. There was no need for me because I was building my strength, not trying to test it. And the movements that I experimented with had amazing carryover. You saw me do a 365 without any peaking, without even practicing the raw bench because I was doing all these specific variations, all right? That's how I got the strength in the first place. So watch some of my older videos, all right? Now I'll tell you what didn't really benefit me last year. Definitely the reverse band stuff. I only did it a few times, maybe four or five times, but I didn't like it whatsoever. And in truth, I only did it because my friend was training with me at the time. The reverse band, I don't really like, but double bands, I stand by at 100%. Chains, I stand by 100%. They worked really well. I did a 305 pause bench with 80 pound of chain, all right? And I did a lot of bands and chain combinations and a lot of speed work. So that's how I got the strength. Uh, the slingshot, excellent, excellent, excellent carryover. I also did a lot of weighted dips back then. So please watch my older videos. You'll see what I did. That's how I built the majority of my strength. Now, how did I regain it? Because that's what you're here for, right? Okay, first of all, I only paused my presses. I never did any touch and go except for that one time where I tested in front of the camera, okay? So I, I pretty much did pause benching the entire way through. Now, the variations that I rotated, close grip pause bench, regular pause bench, dead bench, close grip dead bench, low pin press. That means it's the same position as your dead bench, but you're doing it for reps. Close and wide grip for that. Slingshot bench pressed, pause and close grip. Dead bench with the Swiss bar. Pause bench with the Swiss bar. And of course, the floor press. These are the main movements that I use. And I just kept rotating between them, okay? And I got excellent results. It was all super specific. Nothing crazy, nothing fancy. And the reason why I was able to max out on these lifts on a weekly basis is because of concurrent periodization. Intensity day, volume day. You're always rotating, all right? So those are the lifts that I did. For my volume days, I often did the six by six, eight by eight, and 10 by 10 combination. I specifically did that with the overhead press. I actually did 115, 10 by 10, which was ridiculously hard. Like, oh my God, that was tough. And I did a lot of five by five Z presses, and I upped my tricep volume. A lot of overhead extensions with bands, using the rope, using the V-bar handle. A lot of band push downs, okay? Taking the arm training, rather seriously. Pretty much all I've been doing for these last months is bench press specific training and pull-ups and then high volume overhead pressing on the side. Oh, and also for the intensity day, I would do a lot of partial overhead presses from the eye level, okay? And sometimes I went a little bit higher, but 
very rarely. And then for one instance, near the end, I did a three week speed wave with double mini bands on the bench press. 50%, 55, 60, all right? Using 30 second rest intervals. Also, I did a pause this time. Whereas last year I did it touch and go. You should also know that I use training equipment the entire time. I always train with my elbow sleeves, wrist wraps, and belt. I never went raw, raw, raw. Besides the exercises, there's two other main things that I included, which have made a tremendous difference in my programming. First of all, three sets of one at 90% is money. Bro, you have to try it out. It is ridiculously effective. I can't even explain how good it is. I would either do the one rep max or I would just do three sets of one at 90%. But usually I would do the one rep max and then the three sets of one at 90. So I'd be a little bit fatigued. Then after the three sets of one, I would do back off sets. This is something that I used to do a lot in the past in my old alpha body days, right? So the three sets of one at 90% was a major game changer on my intensity days, as was the back off sets. I did a lot of, in particular, singles, triples, and fives. Like, again, it's really, really specific what I did here. All the variations that I rotated were specific. The set and rep ranges were just enough, you know, and the, and the reps were low. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that I did a lot of rear delt work with the band face pull. I got really into those again and it's done so much for my rotator cuffs. Uh, even getting a fat pad, that has saved my recovery like nothing else. Like it really, really helps keep you stable and you, you just don't get any negative pains. And I've also looked into uh, Donnie Thompson's uh, shoulder protocols where you hook up like a band to your shoulder and you gotta do all these motions. I mean, check out the video, I'll attach it over here. Uh, but yeah, I took mobility training very seriously. Also started doing band pull aparts every day, all right? because Athlean X recommended it. I used the reverse grip. So that's really what it's been. There's nothing magical, there's nothing crazy. What I wanted to show you is that concurrent periodization does work for raw benchers. You don't have to do linear, man. I'm showing you that if you rotate the right movements and you manage your volume and intensity the proper way, you're gonna get bigger and stronger. The carryover will be there. The only people who mess this up are those who don't know their bodies and they're rotating the wrong lifts. Look at Matt Wenning, Burley Hawk, Brian Alsworth. Look at people who train in a similar fashion where they're rotating specific lifts and managing their volume intensity throughout the yearly cycle. It works freaking great. Whether you're enhanced or not, whether you're raw or not, no matter what athlete you are too, you can be a recreational fit, it doesn't matter, it works really freaking well. And I use a naturally enhanced system twice a week. Now I have some guys saying, that's impossible, you can't get a strong bench benching twice a week. Okay, then how come an upper lower is acceptable? I'm benching the same as the guy who's doing an upper lower. What's the difference? If a guy does an upper day on Monday and then an upper day on Thursday, how the fuck is that any different from me doing full body Monday and Thursday? I'm doing the same benching frequency and because I'm so lazy on my legs, maybe we can call it an upper body workout, right? How is it any different? How is it different from a West Side split where they're also benching twice a week, 72 hours recovery? There's no difference other than the fact that it's full body as opposed to upper lower. So I don't wanna hear that garbage excuse Yes, you can get a very strong bench training twice a week. You don't have to live in the gym. I'm proving this time and time again. That said, when I say that I train twice a week, I'm talking about the lifting now. On Tuesday and Friday, I do the bass root and 30-minute boxing rounds, which is very intense stuff, okay, and it does impede your recovery. I do that, I do neck training, and I do the connective tissue work, which is the high rep band pushdowns and all the mobility stuff, okay? But that's how I train, using the naturally enhanced program, okay, Monday intensity day, Thursday volume day, rotating the special exercises on a frequent basis. And you've seen some of my workouts on YouTube, you've seen some of my stuff on Instagram, and I will continue to showcase that this works really damn well. So that's all there is to it. Muscle memory, appropriate exercise selection, managing volume and intensity the proper way. I mean, it was just bound to happen that my bench press was gonna get strong, and of course, continue getting stronger. So stay tuned, I got more PRs on the way. And be sure to follow me on Instagram. That's why I'm uploading a lot of the clips. So with that said, I hope that this helps you out. Give me feedback down below and I'll talk to you all next time.